The Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing us under of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of the thoughts and intents of the heart. All Scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Before anything else, if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, be sure you have named your sins privately and directly to God the Father. But if you are an unbeliever, use the principle of Acts 16, 31. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Therefore, let us pray. Let us pray. We are here, Heavenly Father, because we love the Word, because we are members of your royal family, because from eternity past our life has had meaning and purpose and definition, because we are commanded to take in your Word daily, just as we assimilate food daily. We recognize, Father, that this is our breathing, this is our means of growth. This is the means of glorifying the Lord Jesus Christ. We are left here for this purpose, and therefore we ask that through the ministry of God the Holy Spirit, this purpose might be fulfilled today. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. The Great Power Experiment. We are going to... Uh, continue and end the uh, series today. First of all, what is the difference between the infilling and indwelling of the Holy Spirit? Well, infilling is the status quo of a believer who resides in the divine dynosphere, and this is temporary. While indwelling, is what's going to happen once you believe in Jesus Christ. That is permanent. Now, infilling is synonymous to the control of the Holy Spirit. And this is an experience in our everyday life. Indwelling is not an experience, not progressive, and it cannot be improved. This happens once and for all. Okay, so if there are problems in your life, evaluate your soul. Ask yourself, what part of my volition did I use, positive or negative, Paul? Now, if you are negative to the Holy Spirit's control, then you are quenching the Holy Spirit. If you are positive, you are inside the operational divine atmosphere. Now, listening to the teaching of doctrine would be useless and in vain if you are not inside the operational divine atmosphere. Therefore, there is a need to follow the proper procedure or protocol by first of all rebounding. That's the first problem solving device. Remember that the Holy Spirit will never get out of your body anymore after you have believed in Jesus Christ as Savior. Bear that in mind. No sin can drive away the Holy Spirit from your body. Thus, try to ponder on what God has done to your life after you became a believer. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit, I mean, the indwelling of the Lord Jesus Christ in our bodies is perpetual. That's perpetual status, not related to our experience. Let me repeat that. 
the indwelling of the Lord Jesus Christ in our bodies is perpetual status, not related to our experience. The glorification of the Lord Jesus Christ in our bodies is the ultimate experience of the protocol plan of God, maximum glorification of God. The Lord Jesus Christ resides in our bodies, no question about it. But the question is, is He at home in our bodies? Philippians 1.20 says, Christ being glorified in our body. A believer has to attain the area of spiritual adulthood in order to make the Lord Jesus Christ real. And He will be at home in our bodies because we are spiritual. There are two general objectives of every believer. Number one, to glorify God using His power. That's maximum glorification. And number two, to become an invisible hero by growing in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, 2 Peter 3.18, and following God's protocol plan. Invisible heroes are winner believers, thus glorifying God to the max. Problems in life are normal, right? In fact, all of life is problem-solving. God provides us His ten problem-solving devices. God does not want believers to be slaves to circumstances, environment, and things. He wants us to be above them and throw all crutches in life and be a winner. So if you have some problems and sufferings in this life, enjoy them by using God's ten problem-solving devices. Remember the powers that every believer can avail, God's omnipotence and the Word of God. Now what are the general objectives of every believer? Number one, to execute the protocol plan of God, thus glorifying God. Number two, to utilize all divine assets and reach the spiritual maturity stage, thus become invisible heroes. Using the ten problem-solving devices will result to develop personal sense of destiny. Furthermore, this will result to conquering and suppressing fear. Conclusion to Great Power Experiment we are living in this age of the church, at the same time the age of equal privileges and equal opportunities, at the same time the age of apostasy. We are provided by God this very power that we learn from the doctrine of the great power experiment. Remember, we are mandated to reach the stage of Pleroma, a life beyond Gnosis and become invisible heroes, the stage where we glorify God to the max. Now take note of the protocol plan of God which we believers are to execute while we are in phase two of God's plan. Let us remember to be doers of the word, not only hearers, because to be only hearers is to be loser believers while to be doers of the word is to be winner believers. It's a matter of choice. God respects your volition. We believers are expected to follow the precisely correct procedure, the protocol plan of God in our Christian life. Again, spiritual life is different from the Christian life. The Christian way of life is a unique, supernatural way of life, and as such, it requires a supernatural way of execution. Believers who persevere and endure in putting things first, meaning right priority, surely tend to become winner believers. 
Remember, the Lord Jesus Christ has put our hypostatic union utilized and experimented the great power experiment and proved it to be very effective. And this power is available now to every believer. You may have it or not. It's a matter of volition. Let us pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for that so great salvation which you have freely provided for us through your uniquely born Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Although we do not deserve your love because of our sinfulness and unfaithfulness to you, you have ever been faithful and always will be to your word. We thank you, Father, for your wonderful protocol plan for each one of us, members of your royal family, which you have taught us in your word, a plan which is the best and the highest. We thank you for the fellowship which we have shown for each other today. All these we ask in the name of our wonderful Lord Jesus Christ, our only Savior. Amen.